This is Jurassic World Adventure, a high-stakes ride featuring seamless screen technology, immersive sets, and some of the largest lifelike animatronics to date. Mixed together, this ride meets the franchise legacy of pulse-pounding thrills. As the park's headlining attraction and the most complex, it's the most immersive ride at the new Universal Studios Beijing Park. Today we'll go on an extensive behind-the-scenes tour of the engineering and technology behind it. So come with us to show you how it works. Universal Studios Beijing is home to some of the most modern and technologically advanced rides Universal has ever put together, while bringing on some time-tested classics to create a well-rounded park. From slow-moving gentle rides and character meet-and-greets, to high-flying coasters and ambitious dark rides where you run for your life from a hungry dino, Universal Studios Beijing has something to offer everyone. Jurassic World Adventure was one of the unique attractions only found at the new park featuring a wholly unique plot with a familiar ride system. The ride builds on tech advancements from Islands of Adventure Spider-Man and the modern animatronics of Jurassic World The Ride at Universal Studios Hollywood. The ride was built over multiple years along with the entire resort itself and as a dark ride just because the show building is up, there is still a lot more going on on the inside. Prior to any dirt being moved, Universal develops an ideal ride premise, plot and ride system and sends out bids to companies all over the world for things like building infrastructure, ride systems, and sets. Adventure's new Jurassic World specific sets were put together by p and Pre projects, from digital design through fabrication and later finishing. Each little cue, on-ride detail, and more comes from the minds of Universal and gets brought to life with their help. The ride opened in 2021 as a top attraction of this brand new park and has been highly praised for its breakthrough scenes and perfect mix of screens and practical sets. The ride vehicles of Jurassic World Adventure will look familiar to many with direct ties to the amazing adventures of Spider-Man at Islands of Adventure. Originally nicknamed Scoop Vehicles from the 1999 ride, these dynamic motion simulator vehicles mix together a specialized six actuator Stuart motion platform and a track bound moving platform. While normal large rides like the Simpsons ride use hydraulics, these short throw electric actuators are able to achieve more controlled motion along with oscillating effects for rubble in the cabin. Mounted on top of the large motion platform is a large slewing ring, similar to Lazy Susan, that is driven by a separate motor for continuous 360 degree rotations. Because of the cabin's onboard restraints, speakers, and various electronics, the center of the ring is home to a slip ring that maintains a continuous connection during rotations for power and limited communication. Further communication services for the vehicles are typically handled by wireless protocols. The fiberglass cabin itself seats 12 riders and three rows of four with a simple shared lap bar. When loading is complete, the door swings down next to riders thanks to an internal assist mover and must lock before advancing. This cabin has seen changes over the years, but the design principle remains the same. Lock everything except what's in front and above riders to focus their attention through the ride while enhancing it with motion. To navigate the ride, the cabin, its rotation unit, motion platform, and equipment is mounted on a traveling base moved with what's called a pinch drive. While the base rolls on normal caster wheels, mounted to the front and back of the base are a pair of electric motors with a 90 degree high torque gearbox attached. One motor of each pair is pressed against the other with a gas spring. The combined four motors work together in unison to move the base, platform, and cabin through the ride by grabbing onto a central flat rail. As the base navigates turns, the gas spring pistons keep the motors gripped firmly, which is necessary as the base movements are not at a constant speed, but speed up and stop rapidly depending on the storyline. Finally, the entire unit is powered by hot rails, sometimes called bus bars, that match the track along its course. On the back of the traveling base, past the pinch drives are a pair of trailing power combs that press into the hot rails and maintain electrical connections throughout the course. This is very similar to the slip rings that we talked about earlier. Mounted on the sides of the base are also power management systems, computers and drivers for the platform and pinch drives plus manual operation controls for emergency evacuations, diagnostics, and maintenance. Inside Jurassic World Adventure is the Ride Show Supervisor System, which is an all-encompassing command system that directs the vehicles, takes cue from the track sensors to trigger show scenes depending on ride status and other factors. 
Now before we move on, I wanted to announce some great news. And that's that this video isn't sponsored by a VPN or a random food service. It's sponsored by you all at amusementlabs.etsy.com. So many of you asked for more ride models, light rides boards, and more. So if you'd like to get your hands on the scoop vehicles, a velocicoaster board, or you're waiting on some epic new stuff, you can support videos like these by checking out amusementlabs.etsy.com for collectible and animated light rides boards and models. For each new model, I'll be giving one away to a lucky subscriber, so hit subscribe below for more videos like these and Epic Universe How It Works videos coming soon. Keep an eye on our post tab to see if you've won. Now back to the show. Aside from the vehicles, the ride show supervisor also controls the start of show media and special effects. While Jurassic World Adventure does rely half on screens, they're used mainly for parts of the plot that wouldn't be feasible for animatronics or special effects to achieve. Any screen any part of the ride is also blended into its surroundings to serve as a set extension for props in the foreground. To make the screen content more dimensionally convincing without 3D glasses, the renders of the scenes employ a perspective technique called a motion parallax, also known as squinching. Originally developed for iOA Spider-Man in 1999, this method adjusts the perspective of the 3D space shown based on where the riders are in the real world which is a precisely calculated position determined prior to construction. During the ride, the vehicles need to follow the program physical motion exactly in order for this effect to work. If it's out of sync, it ruins the effect and can make riders nauseous. This method of counteracting the changing perspective makes the screens almost disappear and become a window into the animated world. For Jurassic World Adventure, Universal partnered with multiple animated figure firms to produce multiple large and intimidating dinosaurs straight out of the films. Since screens are utilized through the course, Universal was able to make optimal use of just seven animatronics of varying complexity throughout the ride. So how does the animatronic go from an idea to full installation? Universal comes up with a general idea of what the figure must do and how it will be positioned. After bids from companies come in, Universal collaborates with them to work on the figure's clearance envelope, the points of motion requested, and what interface equipment is needed. From there, the figure provider works on the mechanics that will be used, how exactly these figures will be made, plus where standoffs for skin will be, along with body shells. From there, the figure's body and structure are fabricated, mechanics are installed, electronics and wiring are run, communication equipment is set up, actuators are calibrated, and then the figure is fitted with its skin. Through this process, multiple testing trials are conducted to assure the figure is meeting expectations. After all of this, the figure is disassembled and shipped to its new home where what is called site acceptance testing happens. This ensures everything is still functional, programming adjustments are made, plus the figure must be stress tested as it will need to perform consistently every day for the foreseeable future. The animatronics of Jurassic World Adventure are electric and use designs and technology similar to the newer Epic Universe figures. At the start of the ride, we encounter the menacing Indominus Rex figure staring at us. This figure is electric with some air-assisted counterbalancing features and a weight-optimized frame. This is all mounted on a fixed concrete base and post as this Indominus Rex does not walk. Next up is the Ankylosaurus, which uses an internal body structure pivoting on a central hidden post to angle the body and point it towards riders. The neck and head feature some simple turning, blinking, and jaw motions to add more realism. On the back, the tail that smacks the vehicle is made from multiple hidden sections actuated in stages to create a more pronounced and controlled curve. Next up is the animatronic that made the ride famous online, the full-scale Indominus Rex that literally chases riders through the ride. To achieve this effect, the ride show supervisor system carefully controls both the figure and the ride vehicle as each get extremely close to the other. The Indominus Rex figure rests on a secondary circular track right next to the ride vehicle's track. On top of the track is a sled that uses more pinch drives to move itself along in a circle. A hidden post supports the electrically actuated figure that features a large tilting body thanks to air-assisted counterbalancing, moving arms and claws that reach towards riders, and a fully articulated neck, jaw, and eyes using multiple electric actuators able to take advantage of this lightweight internal frame. All of this equipment, along with the figure controls and motor driver cabinets, are actually traveling with the figure on the back of the sled and receive power through bus bars just like the vehicles. While this figure is the most talked about feature of the ride, there are some things you may notice missing. 
On further look, the figure actually doesn't have a tail or feet to make it look like it's actually walking. Instead, Universal programmed the figure to stay a certain distance away to block where its tail should be by the central shrubs. For the missing feet, the vehicles tilt riders upward to not only make the figure look bigger, but to keep the legs out of view and in the shadows. Right before the riders would notice, the vehicle spins away from the Indominus Rex and takes off to the next scene. This figure's runtime in the attraction is extremely efficient, as the vehicle makes a complete U-turn around its track, and once it's done, it's already in place to pop out for the next vehicle. After riders escape the Indominus Rex, it approaches a Jeep, which is technically an animated prop more than an animatronic. This Jeep prop on a stick functions very similar to the animated props of Super Nintendo World. After that scene, Blue appears in an animatronic form through a simple jump mechanism made from a four-bar linkage that tosses the figure structure forward. The figure of Blue is a mostly head figure with an otherwise static body. It has some limited neck, eye, and jaw actuators for this brief scene, but it does not move its feet or claws as the jump or heave motion is convincing enough. The lights on Blue go out just as the vehicle fighters pass in order to hide the jumping mechanism hidden inside the prop vehicle. One of the other more notable scenes in the ride is the big finale T-Rex vs Indominus Rex battle. The T-Rex appears as a slide-out animatronic similar in scope to the chasing Indominus Rex from earlier. It features a small arc of track instead of a full circle, but otherwise it's nearly identical to the chasing Indominus Rex, hiding its missing tail and feet in the darkness. The controls of the sled-mounted T-Rex travel with it for weight and stability reasons, but it uses a drag chain for power, and if you look carefully, you can spot the wheels of the sled down below. Across from the T-Rex is a pier-mounted Indominus that steers up on a hidden boom along with a neck, head, jaw, and eyes assembly that is able to turn and roar at riders. The vertical clearance of the Indominus and the sliding feature of the T-Rex allow for both figures to get extremely close to riders and each other while still being able to let the vehicle through. Finally, the last screen of the ride uses more set extension and squinching tricks to color match the scene to the physical props and in the end, the Indominus is killed with its head landing down near riders. The simple Indominus animated prop consists of a motionless head on a box bar that's hinged onto another that flips down with another actuator. After all of this, the vehicle turns away as the Indominus head resets, the vehicles are cleared to return to the station, riders can unload, and say it with me, exit through the gift shop. If all goes according to plan, all these immersive sets, clever screen effects, and high-tech animatronics create a perfect, world-class, four-minute, exhilarating, edge-of-your-seat Jurassic World adventure. While most people won't ever really know the technology behind a ride like this, it shows Universal's commitment to unparalleled immersion by pushing engineering and technology to help life find a way. And that's how it works. If you like this video, please consider supporting us on Patreon for early access, discounts on light rides, boards through Etsy, or just hitting subscribe. Make sure to join us next week as we take you behind the scenes of some epic new rides. Thanks for watching, stay curious, and I'll see you in the parks.